I'm Jackson Bird, and it is Trans Awareness Week. Trans Awareness Week is celebrated the week leading up to the Trans Day of Remembrance, which is always on November 20th, and this year is actually its 20th anniversary. Now, while the Trans Day of Remembrance is a solemn day to remember the trans people we've lost to anti-trans violence this year, Trans Awareness Week is a more general period of advocacy, education, and celebration. So, in honor of awareness building, I wanted to make a quick-ish video about the things I wish cisgender people, or people whose gender is the same as the one they were assigned at birth, were aware of about trans people. And if you are trans, this might be a good video to share with the cis people in your life to help them understand a little bit more about where you're coming from. And if you are trans, let me know what your top five things are you wish cis people knew, because this is in no way a comprehensive list. This is just kind of what I think, what I've been hearing from people, what annoys me, and annoy might even be too strong of a word. Cause I get it, I get where people are coming from. But anyways, let me know what you would add to the list down in the comments below. But before that, let's dive into the top five things that I wish cis people knew about trans people. Number one. Trans people and gender nonconformity, etc., have existed throughout time across all cultures and even in many species. Although that gets into like a gray area with intersex versus trans and gender versus sexuality. So maybe that one's not the best example, but throughout history and around the world, we have always been here even if the definitions we use today are a little different than the ones in the past. This isn't a new trend that people are hopping onto. I mean, trust me, being trans comes with a lot of challenges and hardships and danger. No one would do it just to fit in. Sure, the process of discovery could look a little like a phase for some people because we all figure ourselves out in different ways at different times, but trust people when they tell you who they are because they've probably been thinking about it for a long time before they worked up the nerve to tell you. And also, even if certain parts of someone's expression or identity are a phase, why should you respect it any less? I mean, all kinds of people go through all kinds of phases, some more serious than others, and you're not gonna understand all of them. Did I get it when my friend decided all we were allowed to listen to for a three-day car ride was covers of Wham's 1984 seminal hit, Last Christmas? Not really but it didn't ruin who he was for me. Let people be themselves and respect and love them for who they are, not who you want them to be. Number two, we are all different. There is no one way to be trans. If you've met one trans person, you've met one trans person. And that means you can't make assumptions about other trans people based on what you've observed from one single trans person. Some people always knew, some realized later in life. Some people medically transition, some people don't. Some people identify very rigidly in the binary, and some people's gender is more non-binary. Some people are red as their gender, and some people aren't. Some people want to be, and some people don't. We are gay, straight, ace, married, divorced, parents, siblings, veterans, doctors, educators, pet owners, plant dads. And along with all of that, we all think about our transness in different ways. I disagree with other trans people on a lot of things, like my comfort level on various topics, how I experience dysphoria, what parts of transition are important to me, how I handle transphobia, and so much more. In fact, there are gonna be trans people who disagree with any number of things that I say in this video. We are all individuals, just like cisgender people are, and we all come from a lot of different backgrounds with a lot of our own personal baggage that affects who we are and how we engage with and think about our gender. So while we share some similar challenges, they're not all the same and the ways that we approach them might be totally different. You know, my experiences are gonna be different than someone who grew up in a different part of the country or is a different race or who is physically disabled. Or honestly, I could have a totally different perspective than a fellow white, bisexual, able-bodied, college-educated trans guy who grew up in Texas and now lives in New York City where he spends his free time largely on Twitter, wondering whether the fact that Chris Evans is still single means there's hope for him too, or simply that the two of them are destined to be with one another. This hypothetical dude with weirdly similar taste in patriotic action stars could still be completely different to me in other ways. I and mean, he could be a total a-hole, or think that I am, because people are totally different, even when they have a number of things in common. Number three, we are just as uncomfortable answering questions about our bodies, sex lives, and medical histories as you would be answering questions about yours. Actually, maybe even less comfortable because a cis person asking us these things is, consciously or not, treating us like a spectacle. And these prying questions can make us feel like you don't see us with the same level of humanity. We are people, 
just like you. And yes, certain parts of our bodies and certain parts of our lives may be different than what you're accustomed to, but that doesn't mean that you should treat us with any less decorum and respect as anyone else. And if you're really curious, I recommend Googling it instead of having an awkward discussion with your trans friend or God forbid your coworker. Because on that note, we're not here to teach you, especially about our bodies, especially if we're not about to sleep with you, because why else should it be your business? Trans people have to educate the rest of the world on trans issues all the time, whether we want to or not. I kind of think of it as like when you have a friend who works at the Apple store and you see them at a party and you start asking them about this weird problem your iPhone's been having with its battery and like, they might tell you how to fix it because you're there and it's just easier than to start a whole thing, but really, they just wish you'd booked an appointment at the Genius Bar. Number four, trans women are women and trans men are men. We're not a separate gender of trans. Non-binary people are also not some third class of gender, but they do exist and are different from binary trans men and women. And I'm using non-binary as an umbrella term here, but there are tons of genders that fall in and out of that umbrella, including agender, gender fluid, bigender, gender queer, two-spirit, and more. But nothing grinds my gears more than when people exclude trans women from women's spaces, or trans men from men's ones, or forget about non-binary people altogether. Or when I, as a publicly identified binary trans guy, is pushed into the non-binary category by people assuming that all trans people are the same and we're all this other category of gender. Like, even while the discourse around the fluidity and expansiveness of gender is gaining popularity, which is awesome, we still have to respect people for who they are. Knowing that while identity can change over time, that change comes from an individual's sense of self not from outside influence. And remembering that gender neutral is not always the most affirming default, especially for many binary trans people, but even sometimes for non-binary people as well. And I know this doesn't sound like super straightforward advice, and it means that sometimes you have to think about things more than you previously thought you did. I don't know. Turns out the world's a little more complicated than the way we learned it growing up. But there are so many ways that it's more complicated than we thought as kids, beyond just gender identity. Like, you know, turns out climate change is a bit more serious than that fun song about recycling on Bill Nye the Science Guy led me to believe. So maybe we should all stay open to learning and not scapegoating trans people as the only ones making our lives difficult these days. And finally, number five. Just because trans people have been in the news a lot over the last few years, doesn't mean that we've achieved equal rights and everything is okay. In the United States, trans people can still be legally fired, refused or removed from housing, discriminated against in schools and public places, and unprotected from hate crimes in more than half of our states. In addition to that, trans people are very likely to struggle with mental illness and substance abuse and to face gender-based violence. Over 20 trans people have been murdered in the United States just this year, and almost all of them were black trans women. On November 20th, the Trans Day of Remembrance, we remember those women and all trans people around the world who have lost their lives to anti-trans violence. And while doing so, we continue to fight for the rights of trans people to exist, to be protected, to thrive, and to love. I'm gonna put some links below to learn more about the Trans Day of Remembrance and how you can get involved in your community. But until then, and to spread a little joy ahead of the observance, you can participate in GLAD's Trans Love Stories tag, which is sharing people's accounts of acceptance and love and trying to shine a light in the darkness. This week is also a great time to donate to organizations supporting trans people if you can. I personally recommend the Sylvia Rivera Law Project and the Marsha P. Johnson Institute. If you want to learn more about how to support trans people or you want a friend or a loved one one or a coworker to learn more. Uh, yes, this is gonna be a plug, but I genuinely believe that my book, Sorted, is a really helpful book to give to people who want to learn a little bit more. In addition to telling my story, it has over two dozen educational sidebars on topics like what to do when you use the wrong pronoun and terms to avoid and a little bit about trans people throughout history. So it could make a great holiday gift for someone in your life, you know, if they wanna learn a little bit more about like trans people and how to support us and okay, plug over. Oh wait, no, one more plug. <laughs> Also, if you're in New York City, I am doing a book event at the New York Public Library on November 19th, which is the last day of Trans Awareness Week before the Trans Day of Remembrance. So if you want to come meet me and the other cool people who are going to show up there, you can get all the details about that in the description box. Hopefully I will see you there. And once again, let me know what things you would add to this list of things that you just wish that cis people would know. Now they know because we're going to tell them. But anyways, leave, leave uh, your comments down in that place, convenient place that we have for them below the video called the comments. 
that's where you should leave your comments. All right, I better go now. Uh, that's gonna be it for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.